Here we have the steam hose with the steam already flowing through it into the vessel to keep it nice and hot. The vessel is already at temperature. The steam valve is open. The check valve going in the right direction is marked by the arrows flowing through. Here is a bleeder connection that's, that's used to depressure the system later. Here we have the connection from the JPX down through another check valve flowing where this, it meets with the steam, vaporizes, goes into the vessel. Alright, here we have the arrow pump set up inside the JPX drum. We want to make sure that we pull the bung out of the drum so we don't suck in the drum inadvertently. We've marked for demonstration purposes about 10 gallons drop on the drum, about the same width as the, as the JPX label. So now we're going to turn on the JPX flow valve here. We're going to turn on the air, which is already connected to the yard air. The yard air system has been pressured up and hoses in good shape. All the safety pins are in. So we turn her on. We adjust the speed. You can see we're starting to drop out. procedure of how to pump JPX into a vessel for vapor phase decontamination. This whole system is easy to put together, inexpensive, and very efficient. The JPX itself and the drum here, this one drum will do about 2,000 cubic feet of volume in the vessel behind us. The vapor goes out overhead to the flare system, taking the light materials, the benzenes, and H2S type light gases. The heavy material is emulsified, goes out the bottom of the vessel into the drain. The material is collected. The effluent is pumped to a slop tank where the oil is separated and the water is drained to the effluent treating system. The vessel is rinsed to cool it down, remove the last traces of soap from the vessel, and the is then vented using big eductors or fans and in 12 hours after cool down operations sniffs it, tags it and they're ready to enter to do the maintenance work. Very simple, very efficient, and very cost effective. Thank you. Bye JPX.